we're gonna talk through 12 products that just make keeping reptiles a lot easier. We've got simple little things that we didn't even think existed or that we've been using wrong. Simple things like these little hides. You know these, you see them in rack systems and they're just like, eh, and now I don't want that. Well, what about using this as a subterranean hide? Let me explain. You've got your substrate layer inside your snake's enclosure, say your ball python's enclosure. Why not put that underneath the substrate? They can go in through the hole and it'd be a pitch black, dark hide where they can really feel comfortable if they so feel the need to. You can stick that over the cold side, you can stick a bit of sphagnum moss in there and make a bit of a humid hide. You can stick that under the hot hide with a slab of slate over the top of it. We're also gonna be covering some more slightly complicated products through this video, something like the GoV app. But wait, what is the GoV app? Well, you've got these here, they tell you the temperature and the humidity of wherever you've got them placed. You've got ones like this one, You've also got ones like, in my Green Tree Pythons enclosure, there's Attenborough looking smart as anything. I'll open that bit better. Uh, just over the back there, can you see that white thing just dangling down? Well, that's a Wi-Fi thermo hygrometer. What does that do? It all connects to an app on your phone, and that one connects to the Wi-Fi, whereas you can keep track of the humidity and the temperature within this enclosure, wherever that's placed, just solely through the app. It stores the information so you can check all the information out throughout the, like, what was the temperature drop through the night? Was there a humidity drop through the night? You know those times where you're physically not active enough to actually see them for yourself and see a gauge or anything like that? Well, that records it all, and you can see a big chart the next day it lasts up for 20 days you can get a full 20 day chart it's oh, it's just absolutely amazing i've got one there and i've got one in the living room as well that one just detects the air and the temperature and humidity around this sort of area because it's quite important for me because i've got tarantulas which and scorpions uh, but none of them are out is this one out there he is hello mate so yeah they check all of the temperature parameters but again that one although i can crystal clear see those numbers and those figures when I'm out of the house, I can also check it out on the app as well. I've also got one in the living room as well. This one's slightly more bigger. It's got everything there. You can set alarms to it. So if it goes above that, I'll get a notification. If it goes below that, I'll get a notification. Same with the humidity. And I just leave that one there. Why is that one so important to me? Well, all the animals that are in this living room, we have got ooh, popcorn over there. Hugo is hidden in his hide. We've got the leopard gecko setup just in there. FYI, if you want to know how to make that leopard gecko setup start to finish, it's not loose sand. It's a solid substance the whole way through. I'll leave a card directly up there. Well, all these animals have all got a cold side because they all thermoregulate. Well, what happens if that cold side gets too hot? They need to be able to thermoregulate from their hot side to their cold side, but their cold side needs to be colder than their actual hot side. So that just tells me what the room temperature is because their cold side is all on room temperature. I'll leave the links down in the description down below uh, for them. Just if you want to check out the reviews and check some more information about them, more professional information than what I can portray, I'll leave all the links down there uh, so you can go and do that. But we'll move on to a bit of cleaning. This little device has changed my life. What is it? It's basically just a sponge. See how it's a bit gammy? It's because I've been using it on the uh, morning geckos. Because they're getting dirty. There's a lot in there though, so they are producing quite a bit of mess. Plus the water residue from when I'm misting, that also does it. But it's got a sponge end on one side, you can see it just there. But it's also got a cap on that side, which you can open that cap, stick some water in there, dechlorinated water, some cleaning solution, whatever you want to put in there. And it fills up that tube. You can see there's a, a little bit of water left in there. And you just basically, as you pump that down onto the glass and start scrubbing, the water just comes through the sponge and it's a constant supply of clean water. That was dead cheap from my local hardware shop. You can get them from the pound shops, the, the 99p stores, the dollar trees, all that sort of stuff. Just look at it. Something as simple as that has, has basically saved me about hours worth of time cleaning the glass. Because I have to clean an awful lot of glass, plus the ones in the other room there. And this, just -do 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 -do, give it a wipe over, done. But if you did go down the line of wanting to spray your enclosure glass and giving them a wipe and stuff, why bother with that little sort of squishy bottle to spray them with when you can get something a bit more manly? You're not a man or a proper reptile keeper until you've got one of these. I'm only joking, by the way. I have a lot of animals. So this is five litres. Not just the animals, but the plants as well. I've got an awful lot of plants. I've just broke it. No, I didn't. I just undone it right. <laughs> I have an awful lot of animals. 
and an awful lot of requirements regarding humidity. So this just helps me, especially with the green tree python in that enclosure just there. I can open the enclosure. I don't have to physically get too close to him. I can just sort of go over the top of him to get the plants down the back. I can get all the plants on the side. Same with all the enclosures here. Up through the top of the enclosures. I can open the door and get really to the back of the enclosures. I can fill up water dishes because the nozzle just twists and you've got a jet of water or a mist of water. I absolutely love this and it's the best thing I ever got. I love this little arm strap thing because I just chuck it over my shoulder. I fill it up. I go through five litres of water a day within my reptile room. Not just the reptile room, but the other room as well. And that's for the animals and the plants, for the fresh water and the humidity bumps that I need. Cost me £10 from the local hardware shop, the DIY sort of shop. Absolutely perfect. It come in the plant section. Go and check one out for yourself. Safe filling up those little squishy bottles all the time, doesn't it? We've got loads more hints and tips throughout this video, but if you've got any hints and tips that just make keeping reptiles that little bit easier, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll go through and I'll review them and stuff like that. We're now gonna move on to an easier way of adding humidity into your enclosure. This is just a general fog system. That's it, it's just a bog standard fog system. It produces a water vapor cold mist that goes up that tube and into the enclosures. That's all that is. It just helps you when you're out of the house for an awful long time. I've got a few of them kicking around here. This one's linked up to uh, Attenborough, poof, the green tree python. And sometimes I'll actually take that hose off and turn it on manually and just give the animals a bit of a, a boost in high humidity, up their enrichment level ever so slightly. And it's just something that I really enjoy doing. As that comes on, it just slowly fills up the enclosure. It only fills this enclosure up to about there, but then as it evaporates up slowly over time, it just gives them that little bit of an added humidity. The one thing you need to watch with these is just make sure the water in there is dechlorinated, make sure it's clean. On these swell reptile ones, I'll leave them all linked down in the description down below, but you see how it's slightly frosted? Well, that's to stop the sun attacking the water through the magnification of a clear plastic there, and it just stops an algae growth blooming in there, which will give bad bacteria into your animal. Now there is a lot of people that say, well, they're not automatic. You physically have to turn them on and off. Well, that's where the next product comes into play. Plug in timers. That's those things down there. You see that one there? Uh, we've got an awful lot controlling the enclosure that's just in there. We've got a load more. Oof. Uh, my massive uh, electric nightmare down there to plug in all these. They have saved my life fortune of time because I work late so when it comes around to sort of night time cut off time all the lights automatically go off the fog systems I've got them set at different intervals where they only come on for like 15 minutes at a time it's dead easy you just pull out little pins as soon as the pins come on both the fog system comes on as soon as the time passes the fog system goes off that one just there has got an awful lot of ventilation so I do have that one on three or four times throughout the night because naturally in the wild the humidity is higher at night so that's what I do with that one this one just here is heavily grown in so it doesn't really need that much extra humidity added in there it goes on for twice a day one in the morning one at night and I think I've got it going on one through the night as well and with the plants that are in there it just helps hold that humidity really nicely in there there's humid spots there's slightly drier spots there's moist spots and yeah Everything works well in there. If you want to see a video on how I built this enclosure, start to finish, step by step, every little thing, because that whole background build was completely unique. It's a full mesh screen enclosure, and we basically converted it to have a glass front with that bottom obviously is not mesh, full background to make it so it's not mesh. All we've got left is a mesh top. If you want to see the video on how I built that, I'll leave it linked just in that top corner there. Wouldn't be a good video if we didn't add in the 6.5 solar meter. What is a 6.5 solar meter? This device is fascinating. It's not cheap, but it's fascinating. It's got the little see the sensor on the top and stuff like that. When you press that button, it gives you a little reading. This tells you how much UVB output your UV lamps are actually giving off. Because you can look at it and it's still working and you think it's fine and stuff like that. Well, this will tell you if it is pushing out enough UV for the specific species that you're actually looking at having. Let me quickly just sort of <coughs> show you. This is, again, Attenborough's enclosure because I'm just in love with this enclosure at the minute. Hit the thumbs up button. If you do like this enclosure, we have got the solar meter. Now, if we look over here, this is just in the middle of the room, we have got zero because there is no UV in the middle of the room. If we go into this enclosure, you can see you've got the UV lamp just there. It's up there. He's basking away under it really well right now. Let's get it, so it's, let's move back so you can actually physically see. Uh, there's the UV lamp, there's that, both. 
So that's reading 1.5, 1.4. Now, what is that? That is called the Ferguson Zones, the UVI. Incorporates all the different sorts of lights that are in within UV lighting. So you've got your UVA, UVB, infrared, visible light. Everything's just all sorts of incorporated in it. Anyway, uh, we have got Green Tree Python. We have got Green Tree Python. He sits on Ferguson Zone 1 and needs a UVI of between 0 0.7 and 1.4. We recorded 1.4. Perfect. If you want more information on Ferguson Zones, uh, there's going to be some links in the des description down below. But that's the new way of looking at reptile lighting. It's not really a new way, but it's a way that's being pushed towards the hobbyists now rather than just to zoos and higher sorts of scientific researchers. UVI instead of UVB. It's just the sort of saying that I like to say. They're an absolute amazing piece of kit. I mean, we look at Ferguson Zone 3 just there. You've got, where is he? Do, 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 bearded Dragon. A common species for everybody is a Bearded Dragon. There you go. Bearded Dragon, Ferguson Zone 3, UVI between 2.9 and 7.4. So you get that little sensor on the top, put that where exactly where the Bearded Dragons are actually going to bask and press the button and boom, it'll give you the reading. If your reading falls below 2.9, it's time to change UV lamps. It really surprised me this because the traditional UV industry state that you need to change your UV lamps between 9 and 12 months for a bearded dragon. However, I've got the Reptile Systems Zone 3 lamps in there, the Ferguson Zone 3 lamps, and it's been in there for just over 12 months and it's still firing. I think it was 4.9. That'll do me. That's well within the limits and it means I've possibly even got six months, maybe more, left in that lamp. So you'll be saving yourself money in the long run by not by knowing you don't need to change your lamp as and when you do. That's a 6.5 solar meter. Links will be in the description down below. But while we're talking about bearded dragons, do you know you hate it when you've dropped in your salad for the day and they've not eaten it all and you don't really want to throw that leftover salad away. You want to do something with it. You, want to, you don't want to waste the food, but you can't leave it in there because it's not good enough for him anymore. What about a dubia roach colony? <laughs> I don't want to breed dubia roaches in my house. Let me tell you the benefits of doing that. All that leftover food that you've got for your bearded dragon can just get chucked straight into there. They will eat it within a few hours. They are absolute animals and they're so easy to do. Not only do you get a basic garbage disposal system for your reptile room, because I literally chuck anything in there. If I've got potato, a cucumber from one of the millipedes, the leftover food from him, any sort of vegetable matter just gets chucked straight in there. If I've got a banana peel that my son's finished eating and he doesn't want the peel, they'll get chucked in there. Same with the mealworms as well, just get chucked in. And I just leave it there. And it only takes them a day for them to actually dispose of all that. And it's extremely healthy for them as well. But not only that, you breed in for free live food, basically. So that's all you need. To do. If you want to learn how to breed dubia roaches, because it really is really cheap, easy and simple and eventually you're going to end up with free live food not only free live food but if you actually expand your colony a little bit more than you need you can actually sell some of the babies to the local reptile shops and the reptile rescues like i do i actually give them to the reptile rescue but anyway that's that's a that's a that's a different story altogether you will you can actually make money off selling your dubia roaches which will pay for the actual setup cost because i mean the biggest setup cost for them is for me a heat mat and a thermostat the rest of it was basically free but if you're cheap and you've got a lot of reptiles like me, you're bound to have a, a heat map just lying around or a spare thermostat just laying around. You don't need anything fancy. You're only breeding dubia roaches. If you want to learn how to do it, I'll leave a playlist where you can breed dubia roaches, superworms, uh, moria worms, locusts. If you want to breed your own live food, I'll leave a playlist just up there. While we're talking about breeding stuff, breed your own springtails. These are my two little springtail colonies. They're a bit sort of whittled down at the minute because I've just used them to uh, give him some uh, springtails. So what are springtails? Springtails are basically like a tiny little white bug that are the god of keeping reptiles. Especially if you're into your bioactive, even if you're not into your bioactive sort of setups, these are absolutely amazing. They eat all of the debris, shall we say, from your reptile closures. They are tiny little white bugs, you won't even see them. Sometimes they just randomly pop up without you having to actually introduce them. I popped them into there and then noticed they were, all, they were already in there. So they must have come in with the plants or something like that. They will eat the animal poo. Over time, if you've got a big animal that poos quite a lot, like a bearded dragon or a savannah monitor, they're not going to do it. They're not just they're just not going to cope with it. You might want to add in springtails or do some spot cleaning. These 
are super easy to breed. Charcoal, water, and you can buy a little starter colony for like three pound, and I've just split that between the two and left them for a few months. No heat, no requirements, just leave them there. Every single time I get an outburst of say, algae in one of the enclosures, I just chuck some of them in there, give it a few days, it's gone. It's carefree, it's just done. In here, I had a, a moss outbreak that also re related to mushrooms and stuff like that, which I didn't really want, it didn't look nice, I didn't want them in there. I just chucked, uh, I gave them a big hit of springtails in there, a week later, it was all gone, I've never had a problem since. I started to have some fungus grow in Mooshu's enclosure, just there, my Calyx Versicolor. Just quite simply, dropped some of them in there, sorted it. My morning gecko enclosure, uh, my baby morning gecko enclosure, shall I say, around the corner up there. Just dropped a few of them in there and they help keep it clean so that I don't have to keep bringing the lid off to go in there and risking the babies escaping. Springtails, check them out. I'll leave some links in the description as well. Absolutely well worth it. They are the god of keeping reptiles. Next, a great way to make keeping reptiles easier, pre-packed substrates. This is the uh, Pro Rep BioLife Forest. I've actually got four bags of this because I've got a big build coming up. Now, normally I would make my own substrate, but my substrate sort of, it holds the humidity really well throughout that day. If I'm misting it every day, once a day, it will work perfect for that. This just holds it for a lot longer. I could put this substrate in and it'll hold its humidity for near enough a week. A, a good humidity of around about 60%. And that's what I need for the species that I'm going to be using this for. So that's why I've gone for this. This is the Pro Rep Bio Life uh, Forest. Should I say it there, Forest? It just makes life easier if you can go to the reptile shop and just pick the bags up or order them via Swell Reptile. Again, I'll leave some links down in the description down below. Quick fire round, cups. Everyone needs cups. You can tell by the condition of these cups. I use these for dusting calcium and stuff. I just chuck the bugs in there, chuck some calcium, give them a swirl around, chuck them in, and that activates the animal's hunting instinct. And he goes around being absolutely wild, except for Diego, my bearded dragon, because he's lazy and he wants to be hand fed all the time. Never go wrong with a few more cups. What about snake hooks? You've got little snake hooks like this, or you've got a collection of snake hooks like this. I really use them all the time for Attenborough, just to sort of see what temperament he's in. If an animal, a snake, does escape, which, to be fair, they haven't escaped yet. We had Charlie get out once. If you follow us on TikTok, you'll see that video. It did go quite viral. He was down the back corner there, but save moving all these enclosures out, I just got the big snake hook, leaned it down there, scooped him up. Jobs are good. Spare bulbs. You need to have spare bulbs. I mean, I've got two infrared heat projectors by Mega Ray solely because I actually do use quite a few of them. So it's just better to have the extra safe ones. Mercury Vapor Ball for Hugo, a DP projector. That's the one that's in with Attenborough just there. We just have an awful lot of spare bulbs and spare heat masks because planning for failure is the best way to go. You will never, your animal will never suffer if you've got spares and you've planned for failure. Last of the quick fire round, a teddy. You've got to have a teddy to keep your animals comfortable. And last but not least, when you've got a full big collection like this, your best friend in life will be a whiteboard to write down all your tasks. It's a to-do list. You can just go around, flick, flick, done, done, done. Oh no, I've not done that. I forgot all about that. Go, do it, done. I'm Richard. This channel's called Northern Exotics. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out. Have you subscribed yet?